Welcome back to Thoughts of Nature. Today, we're embarking on an exhilarating journey through time to explore the captivating world of South America's Ice Age megafauna. Picture a landscape vastly different from the one we know today, teeming with colossal creatures that once roamed freely across the continent. From towering ground sloths to formidable saber-toothed tigers, these magnificent beasts ruled the ancient plains and forests, leaving behind a legacy etched in fossils and scientific discovery. Join us as we uncover the secrets of five extraordinary creatures that once roamed the frozen landscapes of South America, offering a glimpse into a bygone era of prehistoric wonder. Let's kick off our journey into South America's Ice Age with a closer look at one of its most iconic inhabitants, the mighty Megatherium, also known as the Giant Ground Sloth. Imagine a creature towering over the landscape with a bulk comparable to that of modern-day elephants. Megatherium was a true behemoth of its time, capturing the imagination of scientists and enthusiasts alike with its sheer size and formidable presence. Standing tall on its hind legs, Megatherium reached towering heights of up to 20 feet 6 meters, making it one of the largest land mammals of its time. In terms of length, Megatherium stretched an impressive 20 feet 6 meters from nose to tail, with its elongated body adorned with robust limbs and a massive barrel-like torso. Its sheer bulk was truly awe-inspiring, with some individuals weighing in at over 4 tons, approximately 4,000 kilograms, rivaling the heft of modern-day elephants. These colossal dimensions afforded Megatherium a commanding presence in its ancient environment, allowing it to dominate the landscape as it foraged for food and navigated the dense vegetation of forests and grasslands. Despite its massive size, Megatherium possessed a surprising agility, using its powerful limbs and sharp claws to move with grace and precision through its prehistoric domain. Standing as tall as an elephant and weighing several tons, Megatherium was a colossus among Ice Age megafauna. Its massive frame was supported by sturdy limbs, each armed with long, curved claws that could reach lengths of over a foot, 30 centimeters. These formidable claws served a dual purpose, allowing Megatherium to both grasp vegetation for feeding and defend itself against predators. One of the most striking features of Megatherium was its elongated snout reminiscent of modern-day anteaters. This specialized adaptation enabled it to reach high into trees to browse on leaves and branches, making it a versatile herbivore capable of exploiting a variety of food sources. Despite its massive size, Megatherium was surprisingly agile, using its powerful limbs to move with surprising grace through the dense forests and grasslands of Ice Age South America. But, perhaps most remarkable of all, was Megatherium's sheer longevity. With a lifespan of up to 30 years or more, these ancient giants roamed the continent for millennia, shaping the landscape and ecosystem in ways that continue to fascinate scientists to this day. Despite its massive stature, Megatherium was primarily a gentle giant, spending much of its time leisurely browsing for vegetation in the lush forests and expansive grasslands of Ice Age South America. Megatherium's preferred habitat varied widely, ranging from dense tropical forests to open savannas, where it could find an abundance of the plants it relied upon for sustenance. With its elongated snout and specialized teeth, Megatherium was well equipped to feed on a variety of vegetation, including leaves, branches, and even bark, making it a versatile herbivore capable of exploiting a range of food sources. Despite its predominantly herbivorous diet, Megatherium was not without its defenses. Its long, curved claws served as formidable weapons, capable of inflicting serious harm on any would-be predators foolish enough to challenge it. However, Megatherium's size and strength were often enough to deter most would-be attackers, allowing it to roam the landscape largely unhindered. When it wasn't feeding, Megatherium likely spent much of its time resting or seeking out water sources to quench its thirst. Like many herbivores, it would have congregated near rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water, where it could drink and cool off from the heat of the South American sun. Fossil evidence suggests that early human populations in South America may have coexisted with Megatherium and other Ice Age megafauna. Some fossils show signs of butchery marks, indicating that humans may have hunted these giant sloths for food or utilize their bones and hides for tools, clothing, and shelter. 
These interactions offer tantalizing clues about the relationship between ancient humans and the megafauna that once roamed the continent. However, the extent to which humans contributed to the decline of megatherium remains a subject of ongoing research and debate among scientists. Despite its impressive size and adaptability, megatherium, like many other Ice Age megafauna, eventually faced extinction. The exact cause of its demise remains shrouded in mystery, with several factors likely contributing to its decline. Climate change, driven by fluctuations in temperature and precipitation, may have altered the distribution of vegetation, impacting the availability of food for megatherium and other herbivores. Additionally, increasing competition with newly arrived human populations and the introduction of hunting technologies may have placed additional pressure on megatherium populations, further hastening their decline. Moving on from the colossal megatherium, let's turn our attention to a formidable predator of Ice Age South America, Smilodon, better known as the saber-toothed tiger. With its iconic elongated canines and powerful build, Smilodon was a fearsome carnivore that prowled the ancient grasslands and forests, striking fear into the hearts of its prey. From its distinctive physical characteristics to its hunting strategies and social behaviors, this apex predator captivates our imagination and offers a glimpse into a chilling era of natural history. Smilodon, commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, was a large carnivorous feline characterized by its iconic elongated canine teeth, which could reach lengths of up to 11 inches, 28 centimeters. Standing at around 3.5 feet, 1 meter, tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 440 pounds, 200 kilograms, Smilodon was robustly built with powerful forelimbs and a stocky body. Its muscular physique and sharp retractable claws equipped it for swift and deadly ambush attacks on its prey. One of the most distinctive features of Smilodon was its massive skull which housed its formidable saber-like canines. These elongated teeth were adapted for delivering devastatingly efficient killing blows to its prey, piercing vital organs with precision. Despite popular belief, Smilodon likely used its teeth to deliver a quick, fatal bite, rather than using them to bring down prey in a prolonged struggle. In addition to its fearsome weaponry, Smilodon had keen senses, including exceptional vision and hearing, which aided it in stalking and ambushing its prey under the cover of darkness. Its coat, likely a tawny color with darker markings, provided camouflage in its grassland and forest habitats, allowing it to blend seamlessly into its surroundings. Overall, Smilodon was a formidable predator, perfectly adapted to the challenges of hunting large herbivores in the ancient landscapes of Ice Age South America. Smilodon was well adapted to a range of environments, from open grasslands to dense forests, where it hunted a variety of large herbivores that roamed the ancient landscapes of Ice Age South America. Unlike modern big cats, which rely on speed and agility to chase down their prey, Smilodon was built for strength and power. Its robust build and muscular forelimbs allowed it to deliver devastating ambush attacks, using its massive canine teeth to deliver fatal blows to its unsuspecting victims. Smilodon was a solitary hunter, typically stalking its prey under the cover of darkness before launching a sudden and lethal attack. Its keen senses, including excellent night vision and acute hearing, gave it a distinct advantage in hunting under low light conditions, allowing it to locate and ambush its prey with deadly accuracy. Despite its fearsome reputation, Smilodon likely faced significant challenges in securing its next meal. Competition with other predators, including rival Smilodon individuals and other large carnivores such as giant, short-faced bears and American lions would have been fierce, leading to intense competition for resources. When not actively hunting, Smilodon may have sought shelter in caves or dense vegetation, using these natural refuges to rest and avoid the heat of the day. Water sources would have also been important for Smilodon, providing a vital lifeline in the arid landscapes of Ice Age South America. The extinction of Smilodon, along with many other Ice Age megafauna, remains one of the most puzzling enigmas of prehistoric history. While several factors likely contributed to its demise, including climate change, habitat loss, and human hunting, the exact sequence of events leading to its extinction remains a subject of debate among scientists. 
Some researchers suggest that a combination of environmental pressures and increasing competition with newly arrived human populations may have pushed Smilodon and other large carnivores to the brink of extinction. However, the precise role that each factor played in Smilodon's ultimate downfall remains uncertain, leaving its extinction shrouded in mystery. Despite its disappearance from the Earth thousands of years ago, Smilodon continues to hold a prominent place in human culture and imagination. From ancient cave paintings depicting scenes of hunting to modern-day movies and literature, Smilodon's fearsome reputation and distinctive appearance have captivated audiences around the world. Its iconic saber-like canines and powerful build have inspired countless works of art, literature, and media, cementing its status as one of the most iconic predators of the Ice Age. Even today, Smilodon serves as a symbol of strength, agility, and primal ferocity, reminding us of the rich tapestry of life that once roamed the ancient landscapes of South America. Transitioning from the realm of fearsome predators to the world of armored behemoths, let's turn our attention to Glyptodon, a true marvel of Ice Age South America. Imagine a creature resembling a living tank, with a massive domed shell and sturdy limbs capable of supporting its considerable weight. Glyptodon, often referred to as the giant armadillo, was one of the most iconic inhabitants of the ancient landscapes, roaming the grasslands and forests with unparalleled resilience. Glyptodon, resembling a supersized armadillo, was a massive mammal characterized by its impressive armored shell and robust build. The most striking feature of Glyptodon was its massive domed shell, which served as its primary means of defense against predators. Comprised of bony plates covered in a tough keratinous material, the shell provided Glyptodon with protection from attacks by carnivores such as saber-toothed cats and giant birds of prey. Some species of Glyptodon could grow to lengths exceeding 10 feet, 3 meters, and weigh up to 2 tons, approximately 2,000 kilograms, making them among the largest land mammals of their time. In addition to its formidable shell, Glyptodon had sturdy limbs and a powerful build, enabling it to support its considerable weight and move with surprising agility. Its limbs were equipped with sharp claws, which it used for digging up roots, tubers, and other vegetation, as well as for defense against predators. Glyptodon's head was relatively small compared to its massive body, with a short, stout snout and small eyes. Despite its herbivorous diet and generally docile nature, Glyptodon was not defenseless. In addition to its armored shell and sharp claws, it likely possessed a formidable bite force, which it may have used to deter would-be attackers. Glyptodon was primarily a herbivore, feeding on a diet of vegetation, including roots, tubers, and grasses that it excavated using its powerful claws. Its sturdy build and massive size made it largely immune to predation, with its armored shell providing effective protection against most carnivores of the time. Glyptodon's preferred habitat varied depending on factors such as food availability and climate, but it was commonly found in grasslands, savannas, and open woodlands across Ice Age South America. These environments provided ample grazing opportunities for Glyptodon, allowing it to thrive and reproduce in large numbers. Despite its formidable appearance, Glyptodon was generally a solitary animal, with individuals rarely interacting except during mating season. Fossil evidence suggests that Glyptodon may have dug burrows for shelter, similar to modern armadillos, using its strong claws to excavate tunnels in the earth. Water sources would have been important for Glyptodon, providing both hydration and opportunities for foraging. Rivers, lakes, and wetlands would have attracted Glyptodon, particularly during the dry seasons when water was scarce in the surrounding landscape. Glyptodon belonged to a group of mammals known as Glyptodonts, which were part of the broader family of armadillos. While Glyptodon was one of the largest and most well-known members of this group, there were numerous other species of Glyptodonts that varied in size and morphology. Some Glyptodonts, such as Dodecurus, had even more elaborate shell structures and specialized adaptations for defense. The extinction of Glyptodon, like many other Ice Age megafauna, remains a subject of scientific debate and investigation. Several factors are believed to have contributed to their eventual demise. Shifts in global climate during the late Pleistocene likely had significant impacts on the environments inhabited by Glyptodon. 
As temperatures fluctuated and ice sheets retreated, vegetation patterns changed, potentially altering food availability and habitat suitability for glyptodon and other large herbivores. The expansion of human populations across South America during the late Pleistocene may have led to widespread habitat destruction through activities such as deforestation, land clearance for agriculture, and the introduction of new grazing animals. Loss of habitat would have reduced the available resources for glyptodon, making it more difficult for populations to survive and reproduce. The arrival of early humans in South America, particularly during the late Pleistocene, likely had a significant impact on the region's megafauna. Hunting by humans may have put additional pressure on glyptodon populations, leading to overexploitation and localized extinctions. Evidence of human predation on glyptodonts has been found in archaeological sites across South America, suggesting that they were targeted for food and other resources. The late Pleistocene saw the arrival of new species into South America, including large herbivores such as ground sloths, horses, and camelids. Competition for resources with these newly arrived species may have further stressed glyptodon populations, particularly in environments where food and water were limited. While the exact sequence of events leading to glyptodon's extinction remains uncertain, it is likely that a combination of environmental changes, human activities, and interactions with other species played a role. Turning our attention to yet another fascinating armored inhabitant of Ice Age South America, let's explore the world of Doodicarus, a remarkable creature known for its impressive size and unique defensive adaptations. Imagine a massive armored behemoth resembling a living tank with a spiked tail capable of delivering devastating blows to would-be attackers. This prehistoric mammal, resembling a giant armadillo on steroids, was characterized by its massive barrel-shaped body covered in thick bony plates and armored scales. One of the most distinctive features of Dodecurus was its formidable tail, which was adorned with a series of bony knobs and spikes. This tail served as both a defensive weapon and a tool for balancing the animal's considerable bulk. With a length of up to six feet, approximately two meters, and a weight of over a ton, Dodecurus was one of the largest glyptodonts to ever roam South America. The bony armor that covered Dodecurus's body provided effective protection against predators such as saber-toothed cats and giant birds of prey. Made up of interlocking plates and scales, this armor formed a formidable barrier that would have been difficult for predators to penetrate. Despite its massive size and armor, Dodecurus was likely a relatively slow-moving animal, relying on its defensive adaptations rather than speed to evade predators. Its sturdy limbs and powerful claws were well-suited for digging up roots and tubers, which formed the bulk of its diet. Dodecurus was primarily a herbivore, feeding on a diet of vegetation including roots, tubers, and grasses that it excavated using its powerful claws. Its sturdy build and massive size coupled with its formidable armor made it largely immune to predation. They likely preferred open grasslands and savannas as its habitat, where it could find an abundance of the plants it relied upon for sustenance. These environments provided ample grazing opportunities for Doodecurus, allowing it to thrive and reproduce in large numbers. Despite its imposing appearance, Dodecurus was likely a relatively docile creature, spending much of its time foraging for food and seeking out water sources to drink. Its massive size and armor likely provided it with a sense of security, allowing it to roam the landscape with relative impunity. While Dodecurus may have been slow moving compared to some of its contemporaries, its formidable armor and defensive tail made it a formidable opponent for any would-be predators. Fossil evidence suggests that encounters between Dodecurus and predators such as saber-toothed cats may have been relatively rare, as few predators would have been capable of successfully taking down such a well-armored adversary. One of the most distinctive features of Dodecurus was its tail, which was adorned with a series of bony knobs and spikes resembling a medieval mace. This tail served as both a defensive weapon and a tool for balancing the animal's considerable bulk. Fossilized tail clubs of Dodecurus have been found, providing tangible evidence of their use in combat and defense against predators. The tail club of Dodecurus was a formidable weapon 
capable of delivering devastating blows to would-be attackers. It could swing its tail with incredible force, using the bony spikes to inflict serious injuries on predators such as saber-toothed cats or, or even rival members of its own species during territorial disputes. The unique structure of the tail club suggests that it evolved as a specialized defensive adaptation, allowing Dodicurus to better defend itself against predators in its ancient environment. By swinging its tail club with precision and force, Dodicurus could deter even the most determined attackers, making it a formidable opponent in the prehistoric landscapes of Ice Age South America. Interactions between humans and Dodicurus likely occurred during the late Pleistocene, when early human populations began to spread across South America. While direct evidence of human Dodicurus interactions is limited, there are several indirect ways in which humans may have impacted these megafauna. Early humans in South America were skilled hunters capable of bringing down large prey animals. While there is no direct evidence of humans specifically hunting Dodicurus, it's plausible that they were targeted for their meat, hide, and bones particularly during times of scarcity or for ceremonial purposes. As human populations expanded, they would have competed with Doetacurus and other large herbivores for resources such as food, water, and shelter. Increased hunting pressure by humans may have exacerbated competition for these resources, potentially contributing to the decline of megafauna populations. The spread of human populations across South America likely led to habitat modification through activities such as deforestation, land clearance for agriculture, and the introduction of new grazing animals. These changes would have altered the availability and distribution of food and water sources for Dodecurus, impacting their ability to survive and reproduce. Dodecurus, like other Ice Age megafauna, may have held cultural significance for early human populations in South America. Their imposing size, unique appearance and role in the ecosystem may have inspired myths, legends, and artistic representations among indigenous peoples, leaving a lasting imprint on cultural narratives and traditions. While the exact nature of interactions between humans and Dodecurus remains speculative, it's clear that early human populations would have had some level of impact on these megafauna through hunting, competition for resources, and habitat modification. Transitioning from the armored behemoths of the past to a truly enigmatic creature of Ice Age South America, let's delve into the world of Macrauchenia. Imagine a creature resembling a bizarre blend of camel, giraffe, and elephant, with a long, flexible neck and a unique nasal structure unlike anything seen in modern animals. This prehistoric mammal, often described as a strange beast, possessed a combination of anatomical features that defy easy categorization. At first glance, Macrauchenia might appear somewhat familiar, with a body resembling that of a large camel or llama. However, upon closer inspection, its long, slender limbs and unique skeletal structure set it apart from any living mammal today. One of the most striking features of Macrauchenia was its elongated neck, which was much longer and more flexible than that of any modern mammal. This distinctive adaptation likely allowed Macrauchenia to reach vegetation at different heights and navigate its environment with ease. Another puzzling aspect of Macrauchenia's anatomy was its nasal structure, which featured large bony nostril openings located on the top of its skull. This unusual nasal arrangement has led to much speculation among scientists about the function and purpose of Macrauchenia's sense of smell. In terms of size, Macrauchenia was comparable to a modern day camel, with adults reaching lengths of around 10 feet, three meters from head to tail. Its body was covered in a thick coat of fur, providing insulation against the cold temperatures of the Ice Age. Macrauchenia's combination of anatomical features makes it a truly unique and enigmatic creature of Ice Age South America. Macrauchenia was primarily a herbivore, feeding on a diet of vegetation, such as grasses, leaves, and shrubs that it browsed from the landscape using its long, flexible neck. They likely inhabited a variety of environments across Ice Age South America, ranging from open grasslands and savannas to more densely vegetated areas such as forests and scrublands. Its versatile feeding habits and adaptable nature allowed it to thrive in a wide range of habitats, making it one of the most widespread megafauna of its time. Despite its unusual appearance, 
Macrachenia was likely well adapted to its environment, using its long neck to reach vegetation at different heights and its keen sense of smell to detect food and potential predators. Its slender limbs and agile movements suggest that it was capable of traversing varied terrain with ease, allowing it to explore different habitats in search of food and water. While much about Macrachenia's behavior remains speculative, its presence in diverse habitats across South America suggests that it played a significant ecological role as a herbivore, shaping plant communities and influencing the dynamics of ancient ecosystems. Despite being one of the most recognizable Ice Age mammals of South America, Macrochenia's taxonomic classification has puzzled paleontologists for centuries. Its unique combination of anatomical features, including a long, flexible neck and unusual nasal structure, defies easy categorization within any known mammalian group. For many years, Macrochenia was thought to be related to modern-day ungulates, such as camels or llamas, due to its superficial resemblance to these animals. However, detailed studies of its skeletal anatomy and molecular analyses of ancient DNA have challenged this interpretation, suggesting that Macrochenia may belong to a completely extinct group of mammals with no living descendants. Some researchers have proposed that Macrochenia may be related to a group of extinct South American mammals known as Lytopterns, which were herbivores with similar body shapes and ecological roles. However, the exact evolutionary relationships between Macrochenia and other mammals remain uncertain, leaving its taxonomic status an ongoing subject of debate and speculation. That's all for this video. If you've learned something new, hit the like button and share with your friends. You could also subscribe for more answers to your thoughts of nature. Please leave a comment for what you would like to learn about next. Thank you.